Welcome to Be Less Stupid. This is part three of my six part series on ADHD and kicking the symptoms right in the ass. You can find links to parts one and two in the description. These aren't tips that you have to watch in order. So stick around, watch this video, then you can go check out parts one and two. Okay, here's the next tip. Encourage people who communicate with you to make sure that they have your attention first. And when they do talk, they should look you right in the eyes. If you are a person with ADHD, you already know that your attention switches from one thing to another pretty quickly. And this is made worse when you're in a situation that plays to your deficiencies instead of one that plays to your strengths. Let me give you an example. Yes, my attention span is short, but the reason my kids weren't picked up after school isn't because I lack focus. It's because my wife was standing in front of the open fridge with a toothbrush in her mouth when she said, I'll pick up your kids at three. Never mind that while she was shouting from inside the fridge, I was playing wordscape in the other room. My wife's shouting across the room like that. I call that the difference between broadcasting and communicating. When someone is broadcasting, they have these words that are inside them that they have to get out, that they feel compelled to say, and they clearly obviously don't care if anyone hears them. Because if they did, they wouldn't have been saying them from inside the fridge with a toothbrush in their mouth. I find that my wife broadcasts a lot. I'm sure you've got people in your life who broadcast as well. Then there's something I call communicating. The person saying the words wants them to be received by someone. And not just receive them, but to take them in, to process them, and then to do something. To that end, I encourage people to talk to me in the way that I listen best. And for me, that's face to face. No distractions, not from inside the fridge with a toothbrush in your mouth. Now, because my wife tends to broadcast and I don't want my kids to be stuck out in the rain, I had to come up with a solution. Headphones. I wear headphones a lot, even when I'm not listening to the Reply All podcast or to Howard Stern on Sirius. Hit him with the hind. I wear these big clunky ones. They're old. They're not sleek like the Apple earbud. When I have these on, even my wife can see that I'm not just waiting around for her to broadcast her thoughts. Even from across the room, inside the fridge, she can see that if she says something, I'm just not going to hear it. That is, until she comes up to me to get my attention, she's got to look me in the eyes. I've got to take these off. She's got to take the toothbrush out of her mouth and then talk to me in a way that I listen best. Okay, here it is. Tip number six. I have no important conversations with people in my life before 8 a.m. or after 9.30. And this is a very firm rule. Before eight, I haven't taken my meds. After 9.30, the meds have worn off. Before eight and after 9.30, I'm like uh, the Hulk, inarticulate, edgy, and gruff. Between those hours, however, I'm like Dr. Bruce Banner. When people with ADD or ADHD are off their meds, the racing thoughts, emotions, anxiety, frustrations, and distractions that we're able to control during the day while we're on our medications are much less controllable. Still possible, of course, but hard, and sometimes even harder than that. So this is what I do in my life, and you can try it. Between 8 and 9.30 p.m., I tell my wife and kids that we can talk about anything that they'd like. We can talk about Donald Trump. We can talk about their school. We can talk about their grades. We can talk about taxes. We can talk about menstruation. However, before 8 or after 9.30, the only acceptable subjects are, A, have you watched that new adorable cat documentary on Nat Geo, two, unicorns, and three, ketchup. In other words, the only things that you can talk about are things that you'd be comfortable talking to the Pope about in an elevator packed with a dozen clones of your own grandmother. So summing up, as a person with ADD or ADHD, it's important to understand when you are at your best and that there are times during the day when your susceptibility to distraction and frustration are heightened. So don't fall prey to your own biological hurdles. You're not 
at your best. Your ability to remain calm is compromised. Your ability to control your own thoughts, emotions, and language is compromised early in the morning and late at night. So, you don't want to subject the people in your life who you love and respect to what appears to them as perhaps your disinterest or your sudden outbursts or your intense frustrations. So, to avoid that, encourage people to communicate that which is important to them when you are at your best. And that's after you take your meds. Okay, that's it for part three of this six part series on ADHD. Remember, the links to parts one and two are down in the description. Please remember to subscribe and to hit that little bell button so that you'll be notified when new episodes premiere. Plus, I wanna remind you to check out our two other series. There's This Versus That, which is a little bit like a Mythbusters, only it's about the science within arm's reach. Destructive force of the wind. With more, we turn to our correspondent, Chris Tallman. Thanks rehearsal, everybody. Plus, there's our other series, Pizza with Writers. It's where I interview the writers and creators of some of your favorite television shows while we make pizza in my wood-fired oven. You're making That's their motto, Pizza Rev. We don't take pizza <laughs> seriously. <laughs>